Welcome to a journey into the history of supramolecular chemistry. We are suprachem freak that are interested to discuss supramolecular chemistry. Herein, we bring to you the part 1 in the history discussing the attempts to understand intermolecular interactions that gave birth to what we know in modern days as the field of supramolecular chemistry. What is supramolecular chemistry? Nobel laureate Professor Jean-Marie Lenn in 1978 coined the term supramolecular chemistry for the chemistry beyond molecules. According to IUPAC, it is a field of chemistry related to species of greater complexity than molecules that are held together and organized by intramolecular interactions. Supramolecular chemistry has evolved and proven to have implication in interdisciplinary sciences. It is a plethora of applications of supramolecular chemistry and there are many more to be discovered. Some of them are in mainstream chemistry as gas storage and catalysis, in biomaterials as diagnostic and therapeutics, optical and electrolytic materials such as smart materials with switchable applications in data storage, in mechanical materials as smart materials with unique properties such as self-healing and recyclable materials. Let us begin our journey of how supramolecular chemistry has evolved. In 1756, Alex Frederick Konstrad, a Swedish mineralogist and chemist, discovered zeolites and observed that these solids are released on heating vapors. These modern-day molecular sieves are one of the first complexes to be discovered. In 1778, Joseph Priestley, an English scientist who discovered 10 gases included oxygen, observed that the ice formed from an aqueous solution of sulfur dioxide sank rather than floating. This anomalous ice was a gas hydrate solid, one of first discovered clathrates. In 1810, Sir Humphrey Davy, a Cornish chemist and an inventor, known for isolation and discovery of various elements, discovered that water is a part of what was known as solidified chlorine, which was actually a clathrate of chlorine hydrate. In 19th century, other contributions were made in the study of nitrogen complexes. Michael Faraday in 1823 reduced the formula of chlorine hydrate. In 1841, C. Schofhorschel discovered the graphene intercalate complexes. In 1849, F. Wohler prepared B. quinol clathrate of hydrogen sulfide. A few years earlier, in 1774, Benjamin Franklin, an American polymath, discovered monolayer self assembly of oil on water. Once while travelling on a ship, he observed that the wake of a ship was diminished when the cooks cuddled their greasy water. Entrusted by this, he studied the effects of water on a large pond in London. He said, I fetched out a cruet of oil and dropped a little of it on the water, though not more than a teaspoonful, produced an instant calm over a space of several yards square which spread amazingly and extended itself gradually till it reached the lee side, making all the quarter of the pond perhaps half an acre as smoothing as a looking glass. This is the present day Langmuir blotgut films of monolayer amphiphiles with hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail on the water. This was one of the first attempts to study self-assembly. In 1873, a breakthrough occurred by genius thinking of Nobel laureates. Professor Gohanas Diedrich van der Waal, who was a Dutch theoretical physicist and thermodynamicist, who is a famous for his work on the equation for state of gases and liquids. While he was studying about gases, he realized the existence of critical temperature and deduced that there must exist some intermolecular forces between molecules which we call as van der Waal forces. It is one of the known covalent interaction and has the weakest chemical force with a strength of 0.4 to 4 kilojoules per mole. In the late 19th century, around 1890, Nobel laureate Professor Herman Emil Fischer, who had an immense contribution to synthetic organic chemistry, discovered enzyme substrate interactions and referred them as lock and key model, where the guest has a size and shape complementary to the host. This was the foundation for present day molecular recognition and host guest chemistry. In 1891, Willer and Hebt isolated oligosaccharides produced by starch derivatives using the enzyme cyclodextrin glycosyl transferase 
This material is presently called cyclodextrin and is an important host material in the field of host and guest chemistry. The named it cellulose and Willers in this regard said that this is dried material is very hungry for water. In 1893, another breakthrough and a beginning of a new field of chemistry called coordination chemistry was established by Nobel laureate Professor Alfred Werner. Astonished by molecular compounds, Werner proposed that these are the compounds composed of central transition metal atoms around which a definite number of neutrals or anionic atoms, radicals or molecules which are arranged. He established the theory of variable valence. In early 20th century, Nobel laureate Professor Paul Ehrlich, who was a German Jewish physician and scientist who worked in the field of hematology, immunology and arctic microbial chemotherapy and also established the concept of receptor. He proposed that molecules and drugs do not act if they don't bind. This has great implications in various areas of biomedical research. In 1919, the discovery of hydrogen bonding, one of the most significant in supramolecular chemistry, Huggins in his master thesis reported an idea of hydrogen fluoride dimer. This was an extension of Lewis Dock structure which inspired Professor Wendell Mitchell Latimer and Professor Werthoff Rodbush to define a new bond as they referred in their paper in 1920 as the hydrogen nucleus held between two octate constitutes a weak bond. Later, in 1929, Pauling termed this as hydrogen bond in a letter to William Bragg. This is a strong non-covalent interaction with a strength of 20 to 25 kilojoule per mole. In 93, marked a milestone in the history of science where Professor James Watson and Professor Francis Crick proposed the double helical structure of DNA and were awarded with a Nobel Prize. Sharkov's base pairing rule, where the hydrogen bonding between purines and pyrimidines always preferred adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine and paved the way to the field of genetics and bioengineering and DNA nanotechnology. So far we have discussed the timelines of discoveries from the mid 18th century to the mid 20th century. As with all the science development, these two centuries had slow yet very important and significant contributions. After the mid 20th century, the development paced up and we shall discuss the unveiling of modern supramolecular chemistry in our next video on this path. Thank you for watching. Please share your thoughts. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe. We endeavor for accurateness and true information. However, if you find something not right, we will be happy to discuss. Contact us.